This month's Centenary College in Shreveport opened its newest exhibit at the Meadows Museum of Art. It's an extraordinary showing where exiles introduce themselves to the world. Using disposable and digital cameras, photographers bring to the West insight into a 2,500-year-old culture from the land that's called the roof of the world. They're black and white photographs of four travelers who are climbers, really, going across China and traveling what's called Minyakonka, what was one of the highest mountains in the range in western China. So this is a photographic exhibition in black and white um, prior to the Tibetan community going into exile. And then we have down here photographs that are in color that are post-exile and that are from a monk in exile as well as a layperson in exile. In 1949, the Chinese invaded. By 1959, the Dalai Lama went into exile. Uh, 1.2 million Tibetans were killed. There were about 6 million Tibetans, so one, a sixth of the population was killed. They had 6,000 monasteries, which were the, the, which were the Tibetan educational system and the Chinese left seven, uh, 13 monasteries standing. My parents were the first Tibetan uh, generation who came into exile. In fact, they were the first generation in uh, India, but they were not born in India. They were escaped over in 1959 into India. If you go back into our history, we have always had a very good and uh, very uh, sort of spiritual relation with India. In fact, the the fact that uh, Buddha, he was from India and Buddhism started from India, so it was the best thing and the best country that we could seek asylum in. Our purpose is certainly to broaden our students' understanding of the world and to eliminate a lot of those geographic borders. Really. The world is a very, very small place. We have an opportunity to interact with places we may never have had that opportunity to interact with before. Through this exhibition, uh, with the kind help of Meadows Dying, uh, we were able to put up this exhibit so that we can have more of people coming in here, you know, to see um, these extra photos and ask a lot of questions about Tibet. Well, we started the project with m monks at, at a monastery in southern India, and so the, the first group of photos come from the monks themselves, from, from their daily lives in the monastery. We don't ask them to shoot anything. We, we don't request any photograph from them. We simply tell them to, to the, the instructions that I've given every Tibetan is photograph what you think we need to know. We have uh, Wangden, who's been working on the project for probably about three years and since most people know Tibetans as the Dalai Lama and maybe the monks, Wangan would be considered a civilian. He's got a family, he's got two kids and uh, he get, he brought another perspective plus he had, he has, he's been a lifelong activist and he's been a teacher so I thought the camera in his, in his hands would be very well used. Because Tibetan culture is so in daily life, even daily life, is so connected with religious practice. We felt like what we would do would be to use the photographs along with objects from the culture that would help um, people understand what actually was going on in the photographs. Where there are monks that are going to do ceremonial or ritual practices and they're holding musical instruments, it's great to see one of those musical instruments in a case or, you know, in some areas of the gallery hanging from a wall where students or people coming through the museum can actually pick it up, turn the drum, make that sound that they would hear if they were actually in Dharamsala, India, going to a ceremony. To understand what it's like to live in exile, to understand what it is the Tibetan people have gone through, um, and to listen to those voices from across the planet. I think is a very, very important part of what we would like our visitors to carry away.